Hello everyone, and in today's video, I'm going to teach you how you can research openings yourself and also show you all the little tips and tricks that I use to get all the best lines for my opening videos that you can do for yourself as well. First off, you want to navigate to leechess.org. Once you're there at this main menu screen, you want to go to tools and then down to the analysis board. You'll be at this screen and there's a lot of numbers and bits and bobbles. I'll explain all of that. But first off, you want to head down here and make sure you have the book enabled. If you have this uh, option here enabled, this is like practicing with the computer. You don't want that right now. You want the book enabled and then you want to go over here to these free lines. Click on that and you'll have all of these options here first off you can flip the board so you can look at it from the black or white perspective uh, these three options here are not very useful in line notation this just changes how it looks so if I play like pawn to e4 here this is how it looks with it off if I turn on then this is how it looks instead personally I prefer it off but obviously it doesn't matter just pick your poison what does matter is these computer analysis options right here you want to have the computer enabled you want the best move arrow enabled you want the evaluation gauge enabled and what the evaluation is and the evaluation gauge is essentially this number right here by the way, this option right here turns the engine off and on. Well, what this number is right here is essentially the higher it is, the better this position is for white, and the lower it is, the better that position is for black, with 0, zero being the middle ground where it is a drawn position. So right here, uh, one point here is equal to about one pawn, so the engine thinks that this position is equal to white having an advantage of about 0 0.4 pawns. Do with that what you will. But how that works is this evaluation gauge here is basically the best representer of that. It follows the same rules. The more white there is, the better the position is for white and vice versa for black. Let's go back to the options here. Uh, annotations on board, you want that on. Infinite analysis, this just makes it so the engine uh, analyzes forever. You can turn that on if you want. I have it off because my computer is pretty weak and also it doesn't do that much for you. But if your computer is strong, you can turn it on if you like. There's nothing uh, really wrong with it. Uh, use NNUE, you want this on. This is essentially a starter pack for the engine and it basically tells it all of the like most common hundreds of openings and the evaluations for all of those predetermined. That way it doesn't have to uh, analyze all of those in depth. It already knows that. Uh, I'll come back to the multiple lines, uh, CPUs and memory. But once again, this is just a thing to control how strong your engine is. I have those at the bottom because my computer is weak, but if your computer is stronger, you can turn that up. What the multiple lines is, is a line is basically all the best moves from that position for white and black. So currently I have one line on here, so it shows that right here so the engine thinks that the best move is for black to first play e5 then for me to play knight to f3 then knight c6 then bishop b5 and all of these moves and what you can do is you can turn on more lines so if you're a maniac and you want five lines for some horrible reason you can have the five best moves for black here and also all the best moves from that continuing position uh five is like kind of insane uh so i prefer free nice little middle ground i still uh, see a lot of lines here but it is not too overbearing. Now that we have covered that, let's look at these free options here. And these are the free databases that Leech has. has. Uh, the first one here is these master database. I would not recommend this because this is like all master games. These are people playing in tournaments, people playing with like hours or days long and extremely serious games. In your games where it's like a blitz match for like five minutes, these really do not apply and in turn are not gonna be very useful for you. Uh, and also the other one here that's not as useful is player uh, because this applies to just like one player like yourself or I don't know Max Carlson or someone that's not very useful for what we're doing what is extremely useful is this right here this is the lead chess database and this is all of the games that have ever been played on lead chess in one database and you can control how many games are actually here by clicking on this little uh, settings option right here and you can look at all of these. 
This first option here is the time control. This first one here is hyper bullet. That's like 30 seconds, 15 seconds. Then you have bullet. That's like a minute to two minutes blitz, which is like three to five minutes, uh, rapid, which is like 10 to 30 minutes classical, which is like usually hours and then correspondence, which is usually days long. Uh, the best one that I find for my experiences is to have the rapid and blitz ones turned on and then all the others off. These two are just like too fast. You can basically win like hyper bullet by just pre moving like the worst opening possible. And also these are too slow. They're usually not very useful in like actual games. And the same thing here is for the average rating. Uh, pretty simple. The lower rating is the worst players you will uh, see their uh, games of, and the higher, the better. The middle ground that I like is to have 1,200 through 2,000 on. That's like the high beginner to the low uh, advanced players. That's the kind of range I like. You can also turn on dates if you want, but that is not super useful. So now let's click all set. And you can see here now all of these numbers. Now, what does this mean? First off, you can see the position here and you can see all of the total games that have been played here. So in this position, there have been a total of 1.5 billion games played, which you can see right here. And what these numbers are right here is the win rate. So from this position, uh, white has a 49% chance to win and black has a 46% chance to win with a little middle ground right here, this gray area of a 5% drawing chance. And in general, like if I go back here, white will usually have a winning chance of like three to 4% higher just because they have a small advantage of starting first. And how this uh, win rate here is best used is this number right here is the objective evaluation. It is like if both sides play completely perfectly, but in general, that is not very practical. This number right here, the win rate shows the practical value of opening. The better it is for one side or the other, the chances are the better that opening is in trickiness and practicalness rather than objective evaluation if both sides play perfectly. So let me show you an example here. Let's go back to here. Let me flip the board. And um, so now we're looking at from the black side. And let's say you're deciding what opening to play. Here in the past, you've been playing pawn to e5. You can see here that that is the most common move by far. However, if you look at the win rates, that's actually not so good. Uh, white is winning 51% of games here after pawn to e5. And black is only winning 45% of games. But let's look at a different opening. Let's say you instead play a move like pawn to c6 here. This is the Karo Khan defense, and even though the engine uh, objectively likes it less, if we look at the practical value here with the um, win rate, this is a way better opening. White is now only winning 47% of games compared to you're now 49%. And so using that uh, data, you now know, oh, well, maybe I'll start learning the Carol Khan and how to play that because according to the numbers, it is quite literally a better opening at this level. Let's look at another opening at this level. Uh, let me delete this little C6 mark right here. Let's say you play E5 and let's take a look at the Stafford Gambit here. So you can see white's most common move is knight to F3. And let's say you're feeling a little offbeat. You'll play knight to F6 here. White most of the time is going to capture most common move and you'll now play knight to C6. This goes into the Stafford Gambit. And let's look at the lines here. Uh, white's most common move by far is to capture our knight. So let's look at that. And now what's the most common move? We're going to capture back for the D pawn. And you can already see here how by using uh, these and also the engine too, we can kind of start getting the main ideas of openings and what moves we should play without actually, you know, learning anything. And by the way, this kind of text inside the screen is also kind of useful sometimes. This is a uh, like kind of a pre-written description of some of the openings. That can be useful if you want a quick little introduction, but let's keep looking at this ourselves. So we take back with the pawn, and this is one of the openings where there is a large disconnect from the uh, objective and also practical um, values here. Engine says this is a horrible opening, gives a plus 2.5, so thinks a white position here is better than about two and a half pawns, which is quite a big deal. But if we look at the win rate here, this is fantastic for black. So white is only winning 45% of games compared to our 52. That is quite a big difference. And you can already know from that, that this opening may be a little dubious. However, practically, this is a very good option, especially at this level. 
So let's continue looking at the most common move here. So white's most common move is to play d3. The pawn is under attack. What would he play here? Bishop to c5. You can see how we can start getting the uh, main ideas from looking at these moves. And this is something you want to watch out for. One right here looks pretty uh, normal. One right here looks normal. Normal. Bishop g5. White wins 20% of games compared to r78. What is going on here? Why is this move so bad? Oh, look at that. We have just found an opening trap because we can now play knight takes on e4. You might not understand why that works right away, but if black is winning 94% of games in this position, you are pretty sure that you are doing something right. Engine also agrees. It gives a minus 6.8, so black is basically completely winning here. And if they just capture our queen, that's the most common move. Then now, bishop takes on f2, king has to move up, and bishop to g4 checkmate. So now, just by using these little databases here, we have found a nice opening trap. But let's say they don't fall into the opening trap. Let's look at the most common move instead. Let's say they play bishop to e2 uh, instead. Um, you'll get this sometimes. Whatever you play first will count as this main line here. If you want to change that, you can right click on this and then click either promote variation or something like make main line. And now this is counted as a sideline here that you can click and look at if you'd like, but otherwise it will show you the main line. And once again here, we can keep using all this nice data to find very good ideas, like pawn to h5 is the most common move here, even though the engine really, really hates it, says c3 here, and white is like basically completely winning, practically, it doesn't score too badly for black. Alright, thank you so much for watching this video, I hope this helps you in whatever your chess endeavors may be, and I will see you next time. Have a great day.